Hi guys, welcome back. Today I'm gonna to go over my January favorites with you. Now I realize we're in the middle of February now. This is an extremely delayed January favorites video, but it was just such a strong month for new makeup releases. And in addition to the new releases, I also tried a few things uh, for the first time. So I didn't wanna give up on the idea. I don't know that there will be a February favorites. Uh, this has been for me a slower month. Go through each of these items and fortunately, most of these things that I'm gonna be talking about are still in stock. That's always great. If you're interested in any of the items, I will have links below per usual. And if there is a dedicated video to any of these items I'll be covering, I'll also include them below. Similar to my other ranking videos, I'll be doing a countdown. And for January, because it's a good month, there are 12 items in total. So number 12 are going to be the Chanel lipsticks and lip lac. Um, I ordered two of the Le Lyon lipsticks. This is in a soft matte finish, and I do love this shade. It goes so well with their spring release. Um, you know, they had two quads, not available in North America, but this color went super, like terracotta went really well with it. So because I don't have the two quads, I still really enjoy this lipstick when, especially, I pair it with the lip lac. It's more of a gloss, so it's not very pigmented, but it does have that metallic glossy finish. So I'm just going to add a bit of the lip lac on top of the lipstick, so right here. When I combine these two, I just get this really nice, deeper nude shade that is easy to wear, it's comfortable on the lips. So it's not that one or the other product is a January favorite, it's actually both of these combined that this is my favorite for the month. The other shade that I ordered from the Le Lyon line is this lipstick here, and it is like a coral shade. It actually is kind of similar to what I have on, but I actually have a different lipstick on today. I guess I'm just drawn to bright coral shades. At number 11 are the newly formulated or relaunch of Dior lipsticks. And with the relaunch, there were some additional finishes that were added to the line. I got one lipstick in each of the finishes and we can take a look here. This is in the satin finish. Very easy to wear the shade. This is Pink Sakura. And we have metallic finish, Tutu. So Tutu, while it's a metallic finish, it's not quite as strong as the Chanel Lip Lac. It's like a very soft, very wearable metallic finish, even in the daytime. So I hope doing this, you guys can see the difference. Possibly the biggest surprise out of all the lipsticks when I got them is this one here This one is in the velvet matte finish and is in the shade icon. It's stunning It's got this orange brown undertone and with the finish combined it just gives your look instant sophistication So it was just so much of a surprise when I actually tried this on with lip swatch and then we have here, which I think is the most underwhelming of the four lipsticks that I have. This is in a matte finish, and this is the shade Mitza. I still think it's a beautiful color, but it just doesn't stand out as much as the others. You've got this excellent, beautiful standout red shade, and you've got, um, which I enjoy, the metallic in this nice wearable nude color. Then you have a very wearable, very comfortable satin finish in, in this pink here. So this one in comparison just doesn't stand out, but if you like and if you really enjoy matte lipsticks, Dior has a whole bunch of shades to choose from. So the reason why I rank this at number 11 is I think it was a successful relaunch, reformulation. Um, I enjoy wearing most of these lipsticks throughout the day. Even the velvet matte I found was reasonably comfortable for a couple of hours that I didn't have to go in for a retouch. Uh, the reason why they're not ranked higher is I do not like the scent of these lipsticks. They smell like, like really strong 
well to me, pretty strong like skincare scent. And it's just, of all my lipsticks, this is the one scent that I like or I just don't enjoy. Um, thankfully it goes away after a while, but it is pretty strong and every time I put it on, it's just, ah, oh, the scent. If only it was something else. The Chanel lipsticks also have a scent that is okay. I'm not a huge fan, but I'm over it because it goes away quickly. Reminds me of Play-Doh, but it goes away quickly. So I don't I don't mind that, but yeah, the, the scent, Definitely took it down a notch for me. Also worth mentioning, these lipsticks, the cases themselves, they're refillable. So you can keep the case and get a new shade when you're done, uh, which is really nice. And it makes these cases pretty substantial and the amount of detail to them, it's gorgeous. So for that reason, I have included them as one of my January favorites. Well, we are on a roll with lipsticks because at number 10, is another lipstick. This is Natasha Denona's I Need a Nude Lipstick line. This was released as part of her mini love story collection in January. It's got this nice hot pink chrome packaging and this beautiful nude color. It's kind of similar to the Dior one, Mitza, we just looked at, so I'm just gonna swatch right here. There's more brown than pink, but if I had to go with, and this is creamy matte, so it's a matte finish, but it leaves, there is a little bit of a sheen because it is creamy, and if I had to choose between the Dior Mitza or this, it would be this probably eight out of 10 times. Uh, it wears really comfortably. It has like a vanilla, sugar scent to it and it's pretty strong so if you don't like a sweet scent you might not enjoy this but i don't mind it um sweet i do like and it dissipates eventually so with the packaging the formulation the shade itself really pretty um, i've included this in my january favorites if you guys have been following my channel you would know that suku had a huge spring collection release and on top of that they actually have a new formula for their eyeshadow quads. So they release multiple eyeshadow quads all at the same time. I think it was a total of seven, and one of the seven is limited edition just for the spring, uh, but all the other ones are available kind of like permanently. So if any of them interest you, or what I'm about to show here interests you, uh, know that you can get them today. They are in stock. They did sell out um, when it was first launched on Selfridges, but they are in stock today. But you can also get them at any other time since they're not gonna, you know, go out of stock once it's sold out. They'll continue to make them. What I have here is, this is Hikari Gure, which is a very, you know, wearable gold brown kind of color story here. It is on the cooler side which is what I was drawn to. And I did create a look with this and I really, really enjoyed it. It's very wearable, very daytime friendly. A few things to note with Suku eyeshadows is they have great pigmentation, but the color payoff is soft. And I actually have Suku on my eyes today and it would look like maybe I didn't put a lot of product on. It's really not that. It just never goes on as strongly as Natasha Denona, Pat McGrath, or Viseart. It's just very soft. Um, it is, I would say it's keen to watercolor painting. Um, just has that beautiful softness to it. The colors meld very well together. They're beautiful. The buildup, because color payoff is soft, is not gonna be as easy. So it would be fair to say with a Suku eyeshadow quad, you're not going to get the most dramatic, blown out look. Even if you go for a very smoky look, it's going to be on the softer side. So in addition to Hikari Gure, I also got, um, actually I got three quads in total. This is Ake Kage. I love this red. Has some brown to it. Love this kind of like brown, but also has gray undertone. So different, so beautiful, so beautiful. When you think this is not very wearable because of the red and what you're gonna do with these colors, just blend them together. <laughs> 
put them not exactly on top of one another, all three of them, but if you just layer one and layer the other lightly and blend a little bit, it's gonna work out. Like they're very easy to work with once you get a hang of it. So beautiful color stories, uh, the red and kind of brown gray is not something I have in my collection or that I've seen recently. And for those reasons, these quads are part of my January favorites. At number eight, I did not purchase this with my own money. This was sent to me uh, for me to review, but it's the Sioris Falling Into the Rose Face Mist. This I went on and on about in my dedicated video to um, all the products Dalana has sent me, and it's amazing. The ingredients are fairly natural. Uh, much of it is certified organic. It's not greasy, not oily, but adds hydration and actually has ingredients to help you control greasiness. So with someone that has combination skin like me, I, I need that. I get dry spots right along here on my forehead, but in the T-zone, oil nation, like midday, dry, oily. How convenient, right? The best of both worlds. Um, what I realized with this mist is it's perfect for me when I put it on or spray it on like middle of the afternoon between 2 to 4 p.m. because that's when I feel like my skin is most parched like noticeably and uh, I could use it today too because maybe you can't see from this distance but my skin is pretty dry right now. Um, it usually is on the drier side and more oily in the T-zone at the end of the day. I think that's pretty normal, regardless if I wore makeup or not. Um, but it's especially dry because the temperature had dropped and so the heat's been on throughout the day. Um, with that said, this, uh, again, non-greasy, so I just spray it on and I feel like the areas that need hydration is hydrated. Areas that uh, are oily is a bit more under control. It does not replace an oil blotting paper, so if that's part of your routine, I don't think this replaces it, but I think once you blot off the oil, you spray the mist on, this will not add to any oiliness and will probably help throughout the rest of the time after you spray this on. Uh, and this is made in Korea. It's the first time I've tried, I've uh, seriously gave um, Korean skincare a try, aside from face masks. So I am just so impressed with this. Um, if you're interested in seeing a full list of ingredients and things like that, I'll have a link below. And after this, we won't talk about any more lip products, but at number nine are the two Sisley Le Fito lipsticks that I got. Uh, these are the Le Fito Rouge. And, um, you know, I've heard great things about Sicily lipsticks time and again, but just never found a good time to get them, I suppose. But I am slowly and surely growing my lipstick collection. I think you can see in the back here. Um, so I, I really wanted to give these a try. What I have here are two very bright shades because my eye was just drawn to them when I was trying to pick them out. This is what I have on. Orange Ibiza. Bright, bright orange. Let me swatch it next to the Chanel, Le Lyon. It's not as obvious with the light. When I look at it like this, I can see this is more orange and this is more pink, but both are in that coral range of shades, bright coral. This is very, very comfortable. The formulation, very comfortable. My lips are pretty dry and Hopefully it's not too obvious that they're very dry, <laughs> but um, I actually picked this lipstick because I wanted to pick something that would match the rest of the makeup look and would nourish my lips. And so I picked this one. So I really have been enjoying these lipsticks. The other shade that I have here is Rose Paris, also a pretty bright shade. I'll swatch it next to the Dior Pink Sakura so you guys can have a look. This is the Rose Paris from Sicily, and that's the Dior Pink Sakura. And just wanted to call this out. This, both of these swatches here, I went in one, two, so two times, and then about the same with the Chanel and the Dior lipstick. But look how opaque the Sicily formulation is. Great color payoff, lots of pigmentation, 
with two, maybe three swipes if you want that really opaque. Um, obviously, with the sand finish of Dior, they're going for the softer, which I understand. If you wanted something that was very dramatic, the velvet matte is um, a good example of that. But if you want great payoff, satin finish, very comfortable, the Sicily lipsticks I highly, highly recommend. So for that reason, it's sitting pretty high on my list of January favorites. Oh, and by the way, the lipsticks come with these cute sleeves. The only other lipsticks in my collection um, that I have that comes with sleeve is Almez. So these are kind of this velour texture. And just put them like that and put them in your vanity or throw it in your purse, whatever, whatever you'd like. At number seven, more Suku products. These two are the Pure Color Blushes that was released as part of the spring collection. They are limited edition, so if this is something you like, have been considering, get them now. Um, because if they're out of stock, they're basically not going to make any more. Um, I hope there is another restock coming to the retailers on this, because last I checked, uh, Cult Beauty was sold out, and Selfridges, I think, got a third restock or maybe a second restock and one of the colors was still available but I will link as many retailers as I can below um, but I wouldn't I wouldn't sit on it I would get these ones um, right away if you're interested so prior to trying these blushes I had no idea no clue why people were so excited about them no clue um, I, I think it's because maybe the way they look in the pan. Like I'm really used to something that, wow, immediately catches your eye. I find that the Suku quads are really interesting with the color pairing, so it catches my eye, but I don't know what to do with this. It looks beautiful, but I don't know that I am that eager to try it. But having gotten into the quads, I thought, well, if people are really excited with these blushes, let me pick up some to try. And it is amazing. The swatch won't do it justice. You're like, what do I do with this? It's so light. But I wonder, yes, you can see that sheen. Because within the powders, there is, I guess, some glitters in it. It really reminds me of the Hourglass Ambient Powders, but even more subtle. So it will blur your cheeks with this product once applied. You can apply just the shade here or you can mix it with this. I would say the sheen is on both. So it's not like the orange is matte and then this, you know, kind of beigey with an orange undertone has a sheen, they both do. But maybe with this one, it's a little bit stronger. I think it's gorgeous, so beautiful. And I don't think you have to be necessarily into really strong blushes to enjoy something like this. It's billable, but if you enjoy lighter blushes, lighter payoff, that's still really beautiful. This is exactly it. These are amazing. I would get 10 of them if I could, but I'll be keeping an eye out from now on for these blushes because they're just, they're gorgeous. I will share with you the reason why I separated this out from the rest of the quads. So we are looking at another Suku product. This is the limited edition quad Harugumo. And again, if you enjoy this, have been thinking or have your eye on this, get it today. If it's in stock, get it whenever you see it available. Um, I separated this out from the other quads, which was ranked lower in my favorites because it's it's a real standout. It's what I have on my eyes. And this is not a typical pairing, but it works and it's beautiful. Um, you don't have to think too hard about the application. Shades are easy to work with. Look at that. Amazing. I don't have anything like it. I think about this quad. Whenever I think of Suku, the squad just pops into my head. I just think about it. It's so beautiful. So beautiful. And I'll show you this glitter shade here. And I had popped this just ever so lightly right here. Just lines everything up. If you don't like how a color looks because maybe it's too gray. Okay, maybe I added too much. 
it's too gray now. I I'm not sure how I feel about it. And even when you blend it, you're like, I'm not, I'm not really sure how I feel about it. Okay, no worries. Lighten it up. Pop some of that glitter on and suddenly it becomes nicer. I'll have to fix this so the two kind of add up or match up, but easy to work with, just beautiful, not a pairing you'd see. And in these textures too, um, Suku's matte shades is like a satin matte. It's kind of like their blushes, but without any sheen to it. It's like a satin matte, so everything's just very soft, it all flows together and it's beautiful. Because of how different it is, I just had to place it differently in my January favorites ranking. I just think it deserves a higher spot. At number four is Dior's Pink Sakura Quint. It's gorgeous. Now, it was tough to pair or rank these two, and I think that's why they ended up next to each other. Different color story, different uh, formulation, and the looks you get, totally different. Even if you were to do a smoky look with these palettes, it's gonna look different. It's not gonna have the same ambience, mood, vibe to it. Um, I had to go with this one, but really it probably depends on my mood too, but I had to go with this one because I just really love purple shades. Purple, mauves, and taupes. Um, I think I've said that so many times on this channel. And I do enjoy quads or quince um, eyeshadow in general that have more pigmentation to it or I should say a more intense payoff or the ability to have a very intense payoff because the suku quads are inherently not meant to have intense payoff I know the looks I'll be able to create or the intensity of the looks I'll be able to create is going to be um, much more so with this quint and I think for that reason I've put it one spot higher than Harugumo. This is what the shades look like on my fingers. This one is beautiful, this one here, but they're all beautiful. I mean, this lavender or lilac shade, gorgeous. So we got this shimmer shade, you've got that mauve, and the deep matte, so nice. Look at that. If you are a purple fan, look at that. I love it. Love it. For that reason, <laughs> it just speaks to me and you can do a lot with it. Uh, very beautiful, comfortable daytime looks or something very amped up and vampy for the evening. It's doable. So um, for that reason, I've ranked it at number four. At number three, I don't think this one will be a surprise if you saw my Chanel video. It's the Fleur de Plantin Blush and Highlighter Duo. So pretty. Look at the embossing. The rose is on here. And the highlighter I have on my cheeks today. And the blush. Beautiful. So many people can make these shades work. And so it's really universally loved. I haven't heard anybody say, this is a horrible, <laughs> horrible compact, can't work with these shades, it's so limited, or you know, it's not flattering. Everything, it, it goes on really nicely. You can pick up the product um, well with a brush. And the highlighter is also, you know, not too glittery. The glitters aren't gonna spread everywhere. It just sits nicely in place. I think it's really, just, I think it epitomizes what a great product, a great launch looks like. So this is number three. Um, the makeup that I chose for today are all kind of similar in that they have an orange undertone to it. So this blush is like, okay, pinky, peachy, terracotta. So you've got some orange undertone. Um, the blush that I picked, and I could have used this blush too, but I wanted to showcase more products that I was gonna talk about in this video, so I decided to use the Suku blush, and it just goes really well with this highlight. This highlight doesn't overtake the softness of this, and um, the blurring effect of this blush is still, it's very apparent. Um, and then finally with Harugumo, which is the quad I really wanted to use, um, has orange terracotta shades here, and the lip, 
is a bright color. The other point that I had in mind was I just wanted to show that even though you have products that are not part of the same collection, they're from different brands, you can pair them together because they have a similar undertone and create a, a look like this, for example. I could have gone with a more subdued lip color. I could have gone with this um, beigey Chanel shade that has a little bit that's kind of terracotta and it would totally change this. It would transform the look, but it would go well. I could go with one of the Suku Lip Fogs that is this orangey, beigey shade as well. Um, that would be perfect, a perfect match with Harugumo. And I didn't because you can still wear something like this in the wintertime. If you're into bright lips or you want that statement, you know, one part of your makeup to be kind of like a statement, um, the lips is a great idea and it would go with a very, a fairly soft in comparison eyeshadow look and uh, cheeks. So I had fun doing this pairing today. And at number two, I think this one's gonna be a surprise because I did not talk about this again after I unboxed it. This is going to be the Suzanne Kaufman Hyalon Serum. This has transformed my skin just a little bit further. As I'm switching out my skincare products and changing up my routine to something, well, keeping it simple, but just trying new products that have great reviews, I find that I'm really at a place that when I look back now, I'm like, wow, I can't believe what I was using before. I never even questioned about changing it to, you know, any of the products that I have now. And I thought that, yeah, these are pretty good products. I'm just going to keep using them. Well, now that I'm looking back, I'm like, whoa, there are a lot of products out there that was a step up from what I was using. I liked what I was using before but I, I would not go back now. So this serum, I got it from my Beautylish 2021 Lucky Bag XL. Um, those of you who saw this video or those of you who saw that video, um, there were just, by the way, thank you for the comments. Uh, there were a lot of engagement in that video and I'm always interested to hear like what you guys thought. Some people thought it was a great box and some people thought it wasn't. Um, I, you know, I found use for all the items I got in my box, but I will say if it could had, if it had like a one full size palette, even if I had that palette already, I think that would have done it for me where I would just say, wow, like I got a really, really good box because look at this full, <laughs> full size eyeshadow palette, but I didn't get it. So this was the most in terms of retail value was the highest. I think on Beautylish, they had this listed at $168, $189, just within that range. It'd be probably 200 um, after taxes. And I put this on once a day in the morning. You could put it on twice a day, uh, morning, evening, but I already have a uh, serum or resurfacing compound by U Beauty that I put on every evening. So this was gonna be uh, in, in the morning. It doesn't have a lot of ingredients. I think it's a total of three or four ingredients, which for a hyaluronic acid or hyaluron serum is really quite low. And I am not well versed in, in this kind of skincare product, so I didn't know what to think. So just gave it a try. And I have these bumps on my face right along here. And I think you can, you can see it even with the makeup, just right along, you know, here that have developed, uh, this is acne, so, you know, ignoring this, uh, that have developed with, I guess, environmental damage, sun damage, um, age, hormonal changes, fun things, great things, but uh, <laughs> this has lessened all of those bumps, especially those super annoying ones that are just like right here, just a line of them, like, hey, we're here for a party. We're lined up for a party. It just lessened them within two days of using. I couldn't believe it because I'll show you number one later. I'm not 100% sure how much of that, you know, do I give this 100% credit or 80% or 60, you know, I know it gets at least 50% credit for decreasing those bumps. And I still see those bumps decreasing in how bumpy they are, how noticeable they are. Um, as time goes on. 
So by the time I finish this, uh, I'd love to come back and give you guys another update. I don't know if I will be purchasing, you know, this. I did not purchase in the first place. I just got in a box that I bought, but I don't know if I would go out and get one of these. I love to try some other serums that are not $200 and just see if there's if they're the same, if they are, are different and how so. I gotta say this works and that's why I've ranked it at number two for January favorites. At number one, and I love this tool. I think many of you guys have something like this. If you don't, go out and get it today. I think you saw me flash it, yeah. This is amazing. This is a jade roller and then this is a gusha like for you know face massage lymphatic nose massage our lymphatic nodes there's one here one here here down here um you feel them when you apply pressure because it feels different than if you were pressing next to the node uh, the idea is if you use this you're basically moving any fluids or toxins that are um you know, underneath or trapped, whatever the case, and you're just moving it to the nodes, moving it to the nodes, and then working your way downwards and just getting things kind of cleared off. And because of that, it's going to have, you know, great lasting effects for your skin. You're gonna have less toxins in this area. You're basically massaging your face. And we know that massage has great health benefits to your muscles. Um, it just you're just healthier overall. It aids to glowing skin, less wrinkles or softened up uh, lines on your face, and um, which prepares it for better product absorption. Um, I use this on the weekend because I don't have time to do it during the weekday with the serum. And on the weekdays, I pair these two together. This. The absorption or I guess the efficacy that it does for your products anything face masks face serums moisturizers anything you would put on your face use this to increase the efficacy because your skin just absorbs it so much better it is akin to massaging product into your face with your fingers but it's just more effective with this because the motions are fairly clear, right? It's just very laid out how you can do it. And then it motivates me to also work product into my neck, what's left. Sometimes I just couldn't bother to put any, you know, massage any into my neck, but this, I do it twice a day now. Um, I use this side for under the eyes and then this side for the rest of the face. This is a motion I do. Uh, and then I repeat on this side. This has increased the efficacy of my products, but has also helped me with um, bloat in the face. I have year-round allergies. Some days I wake up and just look ballooned up under the eyes, on my face, or maybe I've had something to drink the night before, you know, a few glasses of wine. Well, I just, just water retention the next day. It just comes with the territory of having wine. Um, this has decreased it. I can actually do something about it, which is half of it, right? You can do something about it and the other half is actually seeing it work. Um, so I, I feel that my jawline <laughs> is more defined as a result. It's better on both sides. That is noticeable, I think, after a couple of days and then a week in, two weeks in, three weeks in, I think it's now been a month and a half. It really is noticeable. So much so, it's like flossing. I will not go to bed without having used this to apply my moisturizer, serum. Yeah, I am all over it, 100%. And in addition to all of that, it is also extremely affordable. If I remember correctly, pre-tax, I pay, this is $17 US. It is just affordable. I'll link this below if you're interested. And I actually did quite a bit of research beforehand. Um, this is made out of jade, real jade, that was mined in China. Um, you don't have to pick jade 
or you don't even have to pick a stone in particular unless you believe in the benefits of stones crystals having to do with energy channeling energy positive you know if you don't believe in that then you don't you don't have to use a stone I chose Jade because uh, first of all just reasonably priced and I did want natural stone I was not interested in metal I was not interested in plastic so just give me something natural stone and jade is naturally cooling anyway so it was just perfect like all the thing all the things that were important to me when i was doing research it just lined up and that's how i ended up with these two and i wanted not just the roller i also wanted this for the lymphatic node massages um and this is supposed to help sculpt your face as well i just don't have time to do it every day um so i saved this for the weekend yeah, I'll link it below. I love this. I thought about doing a dedicated video just to show how I use this. Not that I am an expert. Um, I just follow the instructions <laughs> that came with this product. But if you are interested in a dedicated video, um, leave a comment below, let me know, and I will fit it into the schedule. Well, those are all my January favorites. Um, there were a lot of items and January has been a fantastic month. I hope we have another month or two like this in the year. Maybe not every month, it's it's a little bit overwhelming, but it, it's been a good month. And when you know that competition in the market is stiff, you get better options just because you have to be, you have to come up with a good product if you want people to get it. There's a lot of competition, but yeah, we are, we are benefiting as consumers from the competition. <laughs> so thank you guys for watching. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Consider subscribing and giving this video a thumbs up. You can also ring the bell to get notified every time new content is released. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.